In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. We are now in the fifth Sunday of Lent, and it's what's called the Passion Tide. As you may have noticed, the crucifix is covered. And next week, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, we are more engaged with the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ as we go on towards Good Friday and then, of course, towards resurrection. But in these two weeks, we are invited to meditate more about the passion, as we have heard yesterday in the Gospel, the covenant that Jesus fulfills for the redemption of all, especially for those who come and declare that Christ is King. And today in the Gospel, we'll see how the new covenant saves the people from their sins. As we gather around the altar ourselves, we're here in Portlaoise Parish as well. Those who are joining us through our webcam, Shalom TV, and our own radio, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in, in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words what and what I have done and what, what I have failed to do. do. Through to my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, therefore I ask, I ask the blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, all the, all the angels and saints, and you, you my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant so as to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Daniel. Susanna was condemned to death. She cried out loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that they have given false evidence against me. And now have I to die, innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me. The Lord heard her cry, and as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit residing in a young boy named Daniel, who began to shout, I am innocent of this woman's death, at which all the people turned to him and asked, What do you mean by these words? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, Are you so stupid, sons of Israel, as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. All the people hurried back, and the elders said to Daniel, Come and sit with us and tell, tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. Daniel said, Keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. You have grown old in wickedness, he said, and now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you. You with your unjust judgments, your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of guilty men, when the Lord has said, you must not put the innocent and the just to death. Now then, since you saw her so clearly, tell me what tree you saw them lying under. He replied, under a mastic tree. Daniel said, true enough, L your lie recoils on your own head. 
the angel of God has already received your sentence from him and will slash you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought and said to him, Spawn of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel, and they were too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then, tell me what tree you surprised them under. He replied, under a hollow oak. Daniel said, true enough, your lie recalls on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with a sword to drive home and split you and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, blessing God, the savior of those who trust in him. And they turned on the two elders whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As prescribed in the law of Moses, they sentenced them to the same punishment as they had intended to inflict on their neighbor. They put them to death. The life of an innocent woman was spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. Gospel Acclamation. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the word of God. Now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the word of God. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and at daybreak he appeared in the temple again. And as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery and making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery, and Moses ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? Now they asked Jesus this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. And as they persisted with their questions, Jesus looked up and said, if there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first 
to throw a stone at this woman. And then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. Jesus looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Well, neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and do not sin any more. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have listened this morning to one of the longest readings that we have throughout the Mass, the story of Susanna, her play to our reader this morning. It's a, it's a long reading, but shows the way in which the people in the Old Testament perceived the justice of God. Because if we look in the Old Testament, usually God does justice for the righteous. Like if we look at Abraham, if we look at uh, Jacob, if we look uh, at um, Joseph, if we look uh, at Susanna, if we look at Esther, just to name a few, righteous people who have been mistreated and then God does righteous and does justice in their life and they have been restored to their former glory and their former themselves and they continue to serve God. Job as well as comes to mind in this manner. And this is the way in which people sought and saw the justice of God. And if you are a sinner, tough luck. God wouldn't do justice for you. There wouldn't be any repentance. There would be anything. And people for that manner, as they were, even though they were sinners and they were saved again and again by God, especially as we meditate in the Easter Vigil, coming from the Egypt, coming out of sin, they still fail to understand and perceive that manner in which God has forgiven me, I should forgive the other. No, God has forgiven me means that I'm special, and then the others who are sinning, they should be outcast, they should be thrown, they should be stoned to death because they uh, dare to say something or do something against the will of God. And that created a sense of falseness, people pretending they are right in for, before the Lord, especially the elders and especially the priests, as we see in the book of Daniel, as they abused their power and so on, so they would get righteousness and they would get whatever they wanted, and then pretend and preserve that sense of righteousness, look, we are perfect in the ways of, in the eyes of the Lord, even though they were not. And this is the way in which, as people were brought forward, they failed to understand, and if someone was sinning or they were caught in adultery or that manner and so on, they were either excommunicated, exiled, or even as it was almost in the happen in the story of Susanna, almost stoned to death. And this is when we realize, as we have meditated yesterday, about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and then Jesus who comes and says, this is the moment for which I have come to glorify the name of the Father. And he says, Father, glorify your name, and then he comes and makes people hopefully acknowledge that this is the New Testament, this is the new beginning, that people understand a new face of God and hopefully understand the mercy and love. And this is what brought us in the New Testament. In the New Testament, we have the opposite story, a woman who is guilty for that manner. She was caught in adultery. And instead of filing the punishment right away, Jesus shows the first of the face of mercy. Jesus makes people realize with Christ and especially with God now understanding that forgiveness, there is so much more to us. It's so much more than only death. There's so much more to only just being left behind. There's so much more than just being exposed and outcast of the society. There is a chance of redemption. There is a chance for people to be redeemed. There is a chance for people to be made whole and made anew through the forgiveness of sins. But also through all that process, people have to understand, especially those who are accusers, that they are not perfect themselves and they need to feel and they need to realize and conscience, be conscious about that. 
that none of us are perfect in that manner, but we are given this wonderful gift and this wonderful grace that sometimes we take for granted, that sometimes we're not even using it. As through the sacrament of confession, we are invited always to experience the wonderful love of Christ in the new covenant, that our sins now may be forgiven, that we may be made whole and anew, that we may be restored to the creation that we were before in the creation, in creating in the eyes of God. And this is the, as we are in the passion and tide throughout this week and next week, we see the power of the new covenant. We see the power of Christ transforming the lives of people that they are now no longer condemned, but they are now saved. And in that manner, we can sing and say with the psalmist, as I walk in the valley of death, I fear no evil, because the Lord is with me, the one who brings me back to life. We stand as we proclaim our general intercessions today as we pray. For the church that through this Lenten season we may grow in faith, hope, and love and become a witness of God's mercy and compassion to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, that they may find comfort and healing through the power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Gaza, for those who have lost loved ones in the conflict for the wounded, the suffering, and the refugee, that the Lord be close to them and protect them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who join us this morning virtually. May you continue to know the presence of God, alive and active in your hearts and in your homes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Right moment to present our own petitions to the Lord. As we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we pray this morning for a number of special intentions, we pray for Justina's intentions as well, for Marina's intentions in Australia. We pray for Vincent Ejimkonye in Nigeria, and as well we pray for Paul Gateshead, UK, who is starting a new job today. We pray for the 98 birthday blessings for Clara de Sa Morden in Surrey, United Kingdom, and as well birthday blessings for Betsy Shield in Bing Bingmaton in New York, as we pray all the blessings of the Lord upon him, as we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And as we pray for our faithfully departed, we pray for Sister Josita uh, Ursuline Mary of Immaculate, who died in India and whose funeral is tomorrow. We pray as well for the anniversaries of Paddy Mortimer, formerly of Mount Rat, as well for Wilfredo Arujo from Portugal, for Clara Enriquez from Goa, and as well for Marianne de Leis, Fort Lee, New Jersey, all whose anniversaries occur at this time, as we entrust them to the loving embrace of the Lord. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. them. May, May they, they rest, rest in peace. peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We offer all these intentions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who who comes comes in the name name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world beginning you are ceasingly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon the people's offerings and pour out of them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once, was, we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who is lonely just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake or to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, Filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save, Save us, Savior, us, Savior of, the world, of the world, for by, for by your cross, cross and resurrection, resurrection you, you have set, set us free. free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the, your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race, Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Dennis our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. As we offer to each other a sign of peace. Magnus Dei, vitalis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Magnus Dei, Miserere nobis Magnus Dei, vitolis peccata mundi Dona nobis pace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I worthy that you should that enter, under my, enter roof, under my roof, but only say, say word, word and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed. those joining us virtually, we pray the act of spiritual communion, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, blood of Christ, inebriate me, water from the side of Christ, wash me, passion of Christ, strengthen me, O good Jesus, hear me, within thy wounds hide me, suffer me not to be separated from thee, from the malignant enemy, defend me, in the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come unto thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our step upward, up, upward toward you. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just to thank you all who are present today for the celebration of this Holy Mass and as well those who did join us virtually through our webcam, Shalom Mor TV, in our own radio, and to the people who broadcasted the Mass, to our sister sacristans, story ministers of Holy Communion, our reader, uh, Father Nick, for celebrating, and Father Peter, who played the organ today. Thank you so much, as I hope you have a blessed day and a blessed Lenten journey ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. No matter what you are going through, fear not, God can deliver you. Be assured that we are always there to pray for you. Submit your prayer requests at swprayer.org. Call us. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life this day. Please help me to understand the plan you have for me. Help me to see you, Lord Jesus, in every human being who I meet this day. Help me always to be humble and to show humility at all times. Help me, Lord Jesus, to become the person you want 